Hey guys, today we're talking about the habits that world champions have that allow them to become the best in the world. I'm gonna list out 10 habits that I have, which I've noticed other world champions have, and I think if you guys can start implementing these into your training, into your thought process, it's gonna make a world of difference if your aspiration is to become a world champion. Guys, positive, important habits shared by world champions, that is the topic of conversation today. All right guys, so many people are looking at world champions. They're looking at the technique. They're looking at their workouts. They're looking at maybe stretching and diet and all this kind of stuff. But I wanna step outside of that and go to the stuff that's even more important, I believe. The behind the scenes stuff that you don't really know about, but is ultra, ultra important to move to that next level. Now I want you guys to keep in mind that these habits are not used by every world champion. There are always exceptions to the rule. Just like when you see habit lists of millionaires, most of the guys follow that routine, but there's always people who do something entirely different and still manage to become very wealthy. It's the same with fighting. There's many people who do things one way, and then there might be like a thousand world champions who do it this way, and then there's one guy who does the exact opposite. But I truly believe that these 10 habits that I'm gonna list today are so important and beneficial, not only to your athletic career, but also just to your health and your daily living, being successful in every aspect of life. And guys, we're gonna start today by talking about viewing fights every day. And I know this might seem like a funny topic, and I've actually done a video before where I talked about the easiest way to improve being watching fights. And the reason I believe it's so important is it engages your brain. You know, you can't go into the gym every day and spar super hard and get that brain just firing the way you want to, but you can sit down at the computer and actively visualize being one of the fighters and thinking what you would do in the moment. Basically mental fighting. You're doing mental fighting, mental training. And aside from that, you're also learning. You're constantly learning about techniques, ways to block, all sorts of things from different fighters and different styles. And that's how you build your own style, taking pieces from other people and creating your own style. You certainly don't need to be watching two, three hours of fights every day, but sitting down for 10, 15 minutes and just engaging the brain, constantly staying in that fighter mindset, thinking about fighting, thinking about technique. I think it is one of the habits that has helped me so much throughout my career, especially in the early stages. I used to watch fights every day, like never miss a day without watching fights. I just loved it so much. Now, more like two or three times a week I watch fights. But if you love watching fights, keep doing it. It is super beneficial. Next guys, this might seem like a silly one, but exercise every day. Maybe you have one off day, but you're exercising every day. Don't go through, it's fight camp. I'm training really hard. I'm getting a good, 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 good shape. And then fight camp finishes and you take two months off and you just crash. You wanna always be exercising, always staying in shape, always improving and never declining too much. And there are so many studies out there that show the benefits of exercise daily. So if you're utilizing your sport properly, I really believe that the trajectory upwards should be fairly steady with a few little dips, but definitely not going up and then down and up and down and up. And that is what's going to happen if you take too much time off. Exercise constantly. It doesn't always need to be kickboxing or jujitsu or mixed martial arts, whatever you're doing. You can do running, you can do body weight exercises, you can do weightlifting, you can go swimming. All right guys, our next habit is a super, super important one. You might disagree with me at first, but let me explain why. Helping to teach others. Why is this so important? Yes, number one, we're giving back. That's what I'm trying to do with the YouTube channel. It's always important to give back. But when you start teaching others, you gain a new understanding of everything you're teaching. I say to my students all the time, when you know how to round kick, that's one thing. But being able to break down the motions and properly explain to somebody, all the finite details of that kick, that is when you truly understand it, that's when you're becoming more of a master of it and it's gonna help you, even if you don't realize it, learn yourself. You might say something one day and be like, oh, click, that was really important, but I'm not utilizing it as much as I want in my own technique. Helping others is obviously giving back, but it helps you improve so much as well. So if you've been at the gym, you don't have to you know, go and be a full-time instructor. It could just be as simple as you're at the gym, you see somebody beside you hitting the bag and you just give them a little note, a little correction, or you go and watch sparring sessions and in between rounds, you're giving notes and constructive criticism, helping them get better, but at the same time, you're improving without even really knowing it. I truly believe that everybody who teaches is going to become better and better, faster than everybody else. All right guys, next habit, sleep. Sleep is so important. I make sure I get at least eight hours a night when I'm in training camp, when I really need it, 
plus at least a one hour nap. Now I know that's not something that is maybe realistic for everybody who has a full time job. Maybe you're doing school, you're doing other things, but really prioritize it. Sometimes you need to look at your life. You need to go, okay, you know what? I have an hour in the evening to read a book or play video games and I could really use that extra sleep, but I'd rather stay up. Well, lack of sleep is not only going to affect your performance in the gym, but it also makes you get hit more. You're going to be more of a target because your brain is not firing as quick. When I have a good sleep and I go to a sparring session, I'm on point. When I'm not, I've done trips over to Vancouver for sparring before, getting up at 6 a.m., doing the whole trek over, sparring at 10, feeling all groggy, and just feeling like I can't even block a shot. Somebody hits me and I'm like, oh, block. Plus, sleep. I firmly believe it is the most important part of recovery. And I know there's research out there to prove that as well, but just by myself. I've tried so many things for recovery and I find the most important is sleeping, especially in between sessions. If I'm in between hard sessions, I do one in the morning and then I need another one at night. If I don't get my sleep, I'm garbage for that second session. But with that hour nap in between, it's like my body just boom, regenerates so much. So prioritize your sleep. It is a habit that you will not regret. All right, guys, before we move on to the next point, do me a big, big favor, hit the like button. It helps the algorithm, helps get this channel out to more people. And of course, if you haven't already, make sure you get subscribed and let's move on to the next point. All right, something else that a lot of high level fighters do, myself included, is I wake up and I train right away it sets the tone for the day and i love it i don't wake up and i don't have a big breakfast and read a little bit and you know go through that whole process i just get up and i'm out the door right away i love it it energizes me it makes me feel great for the whole day and i think it really helps me in my later training session as well as opposed to some of the people which i've seen you know they get up they kind of dawdle they do a workout fairly late in the day and then they try to do a second one but they're too packed in together i like getting up getting the day started i think it's so important a lot of the world champions actually get started really really early even in thailand it's like up at 5 a.m or 6 a.m and they get started and right away it's boom training session and i know a lot of the world champion boxers do that as well i think they're doing it to beat the heat down in los angeles or california a lot of times but getting up early getting that workout the whole rest of the day is just amazing after you get that early morning workout. Or maybe not even that early because me, I'm actually more like 8 a.m. That's when I get started. But I love this habit. It just makes me feel so good every day if I miss it. And then I do my only workout in the evening, the whole mid part of the day, I'm just kind of All right, guys, moving on from there. Let's talk about goals. You need to have goals. If you're just showing up at the gym and you're like, oh, I'm gonna take one fight at a time and just go about it that way, that, that's fine. There's nothing massively wrong with that. But I always like to look a little bit in the future as well. I have short-term goals and my long-term goals. And my short-term goals are always win the next fight, win the next fight. But beyond that, I want to look beyond that as well. What's happening after? Now, I don't, I honestly, to be, to be realistic, when I was winning some of my belts, I didn't have the goal like, oh, I'm going to be a world champion in glory or Bellator. And there's no question. It was just more, I want to be a world champion. You know, I, I might get a title fight in two or three fights and that's great, but I'm looking ahead past the next fight as well. And when I got into glory, I kind of went, okay, you know what? I want to win a couple of fights. I'd love to have the opportunity to fight for the belt. That was just my goal at that time. Just win my fights and get to the opportunity to have that challenge to fight for the biggest title in the kickboxing world. Always setting short-term goals and then long-term goals. I think this is important for any aspect of life. And champions, they definitely do it. Now, I wanna move on to the next point, and we are talking about staying positive. And this can be very difficult for a number of reasons. Let's just talk about myself for a moment. The number of times that I have had fights, I'm right in the middle of it right now. I haven't fought for a while. I'm waiting on possibly new contracts. I'm waiting on a fight date, and it gets a little discouraging kind of sitting around, you're like, oh, I haven't competed for almost a year and a half now. It should have been less than that, but a fight fell through because of weight cut issues with my opponent. But even in the past, you know, I would fight, I fought in K1, this big massive gap in between fights after my big break. I won my glory contender title, two fights in one night. And then I was fighting for the, the glory belt there. It was scheduled. And all of a sudden the time between the two was, I believe it was June, of 2014 and I didn't fight again for the title until May of 2015. That is a massive gap. We're talking about almost a year of sitting around waiting, wondering if you're ever gonna get the opportunity. And there's so many other things, injuries. Injuries are so 
devastating. You're feeling good, you're doing what you love, and then bam, you're just sitting down, you feel all lazy. It could be knee, it could be back, it could be anything, but the injury set you back. But if you stay positive through all of it, which I've been very good about doing, you're always moving forward. You're always thinking, okay, but there's a little setback now, like myself right now, I'm like, oh, I'm kind of waiting. I don't really know what's happening in the next three months, but I'm positive. I have my idea of where I want to go. I have a couple of different routes and I know one of them is going to work out. Always staying positive, never getting discouraged by injuries, by fight delays, by whatever else might come your way. One of the next habits that I've developed over the years is doing things your own way. And what I mean by that, or the first time I heard anything about this was Freddie Roach saying, you know, Manny Pacquiao really does this his own thing now. I'm not even really his coach. I'm just there to help him in the fight and give him little pointers. And a lot of people when they're at the gym, they do things only the way of the coach. The coach tells you what to do and you do it. But let's be realistic. A lot of times the coach is dealing with a whole group of people and he's not able to individually tell each person what they should be doing. So you want to be your own fighter. Maybe you're creating your own routine. Maybe you're creating your own style. There are lots of aspects to this conversation, but I'm fairly certain, I know for myself and probably for most other fighters, that it's very important to be your own person, to create your own style, to create your own training camp, or at least certain elements of it, and just to go your own route. Be a little bit individual. You don't have to do things the way that everybody else does them. And that right there is confidence. You have to have confidence in yourself, not, oh, what is somebody else gonna tell me what I need to do? No, you should be able to tell yourself what you need and you know what you need. As long as you're confident in your approach and you can really go, I'm gonna be my own fighter, I'm gonna get to the top on my own. Now next up, a little bit of a flip here on what I just said, but it's very important as well. You need to be open to feedback and criticism. And a lot of people at the gym, I'm not gonna say the high, high level fighters, but a lot of the guys in between, they don't like feedback. I've seen a lot of people, I don't say things too often to people anymore unless somebody asks, because generally I'm teaching classes, those people are there to learn with me. But if I go to the gym and I see somebody on the bag, most people get insulted. You're trying to give them some technical work or something that'll help them improve and they just don't like it. I love feedback. I don't care if the person has zero fights, 10 fights, used to be a world champion. I always tell people when I'm sparring, somebody's like, oh, can I come and give you advice? Do you mind? Is, is it insulting? And I go, no, no, hit me, anything. I love hearing what other people say because they might just smack a pearl of wisdom on you and all of a sudden you're like, oh, that's amazing, that helped me so much. And I believe a lot of world champions will be like this. Don't think you're too good for other people's advice. Doesn't mean you have to take it. You don't have to take every bit of information and go like, whoa, this is golden. But be willing to hear it, not be offended, and then from there, decide if it's valuable for you or not. But if you're always just snubbing your nose at people, don't tell me what to do, I'm a world champion. That's gonna hurt you, it's gonna stop you from continuing to improve. And the last one, guys, the last one that is so important for all world champions, and I think most people will tell you that they enjoy the process. They enjoy being a fighter. Yes, there are scary aspects to it. Sometimes you have that fear. Sometimes you're injured. There's lots of negative aspects, but overall you enjoy it. You need to make sure that you recognize that this is something you love doing. When you love doing something, you're gonna perform up and beyond what you would if you don't like it. And I learned that years ago when I was in school lots, I'd have information given to me, maybe a subject that I really, really loved. And the information, I just give me more, give me more, and I would retain it all. Then I'd go to another class and I'd go, oh, I hate this, I hate being in this class, and I would just be no good at it. So if you enjoy the process and you recognize it and you're willing to really go, you know what, there are hard parts, but most of it I really love and I wanna do this and I wanna enjoy it. It's just gonna make you better and taking a moment sometimes to just really sit down and go, I love this, this is amazing. I'm so lucky to be able to be a part of this world. It's gonna make you better. It's a great habit to get into, appreciating and enjoying the whole process of improving competing and being successful. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed learning about the 10 habits of a world champion that I think most of us all share. I hope you guys can start implementing some of these into your daily routines or your thought process. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you haven't already, get subscribed. As always guys, train hard and I'll see you back here soon for another video.